गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ आर रेडी फॉर टूडेज लेसन इन केस यू आर हियरिंग सम अदर नॉइसेज और सम म्यूजिक फ्रॉम आउटसाइड प्लीज पार्डन मी टूडे बिकॉज द पीपल आउटसाइड माई हाउस आर इन अ वेरी फेस्टिव मूड इट सीन्स सो दे आर प्लेइंग म्यूजिक वेरी लाउडली I hope my microphone is not catching, but even if it is catching, please bear with me. Okay. Okay. So let us begin. Uh, as we have already talked about how to derive the Schrodinger's equation, we yesterday also solved one such example where we found out how to solve the Schrodinger's equation for a so-called one-dimensional potential well. so today we are going to take our lesson to a next level where instead of talking in terms of only a one dimensional problem we are going to see how to solve a three dimensional system okay so the system that we are going to learn about today is called a three dimensional potential box as you can see i have already written and uh, it is very it is very similar to what we did yesterday one dimensional potential well but as if we are translating that very picture to a three dimension where a particle has been subjected to a potential which confines it confines it within not only a one dimensional well but rather within a three dimensional potential and uh, as and when i explain to you how this potential looks like you will understand why we use the term box in this case okay so we are all set to first understand what is the meaning of a three dimensional potential box as in how will this potential look like which we are going to impose on our particle and then we are going to solve the schrodinger's equation for that particle okay so once again let us start with three dimensional potential box so we are first going to learn about how to define a potential box in three dimension fine now as uh, you all are aware that since this is a three dimensional uh, system we are going to have three axes x axis y axis and the z axis now let us see mathematically how we are defining the particular potential now please all of you uh, remember this fact that yesterday till yesterday when we were talking about a potential we were only writing it as a function of x we were writing it as a function of x because we were considering the motion was one dimensional along x axis but today since we have gone forward since we are talking about the three dimensional motion so instead of only the function of x this potential is going to be a function of x y as well as z or i could write it as it will be depending it will be a function of our position vector entire position vector r so let us have this in our mind that this potential that we are going to solve will have a contribution from x y as well as z axis all the three directions will be consistent in it okay so let us see how we mathematically write this term so what we can write that this potential is zero remember yesterday also we had the same thing it was zero within a limit of x axis within 0 and a see this very information we can write it as from if i consider this origin as our 0 today from this 0 till the value of a the potential is 0 so when i'm plotting this this potential is 0 along the x axis within the range 0 to a but since now i have to incorporate the y and z axis information as well how will we write this this potential is again zero for the range 0 to b so along the y axis there is a particular length from 0 to b where the potential is also zero so which i may write like this along this value similarly along the z axis there is an other range which is ranging from 0 to c from 0 to some value c where the value of the potential is 0 now try to imagine within these three ranges along the x axis y axis and z axis the value of potential is 
however beyond this the moment we are going outside this box this potential is infinite where outside the box outside the box which box the box of dimension a b c a along x axis b along y axis and z along the c along the z axis so see the moment i am putting on infinite potential anywhere outside this box what am i asking this particle to do as if i am confining this particle only within this dimension are you following me so if i have to today search for my particle or if i have to solve for the wave function of this particle where i am going to search it i am going to search it only within this confinement of this box the box which has the dimension of a b and c as we have defined here so did you all follow why we are calling it a box it is called as a box because as if there is a box with dimension a b and c along the three axes and the particle is only to be found within that cuboid because we are considering that a is not equal to b not equal to c so this is not like a cube as such it can be called as a cuboid so it is as if a box within which only the particle is free to move because potential is zero here and outside of this box again we are having an infinite value of potential in uh, you can uh, imagine they had similar picture in one dimensional motion uh, one dimensional potential well as well and today that only that information only has been translated to a higher version to a three dimensional motion so i hope everybody has understood please give me a feedback over here so that i can see that you have understood the meaning of a three dimensional potential box all right so there are a, a few yes ma'ams coming in so i am considering that all of us have understood the fact that how a three dimensional potential box can be visualized right now this potential is acting on our particle and now we are going to solve the showing the equation of this particle which is confined within this box all right so today we are going to solve a three dimensional schrodinger's equation up to now we have been only solving a one dimensional schrodinger's equation so i will first tell you how to translate our one dimensional potential uh, one dimensional schrodinger equation to 3d and then we will solve it okay so now let us go back to our three dimensional schrodinger's equation now i will even rub this off so that i have more area to work on fine so what i am going to now do is i will write down the schrodinger's equation in three dimension because our system or our potential is defined in three dimensions our equation also has to be written in three dimension correct so then let us see uh, first let me show you how to write down the 1d then i will bring it to the three dimension so remember reminding all of you uh, by this time i hope all of you know that i can write the schrodinger's equation in 1d along x axis like this like so and when i am writing this form of schrodinger equation essentially what i have assumed that this wave function is also only a function of x only is dependent on one dimensional uh, position which is the x axis but today what we have to do today we have to talk about a three dimensional motion this particle that we are talking about today is not confined within only the x axis it can move along the y axis as well as the z axis within those a b c limits so the first step that we are now going to change over here is that today that the wave function that we will work with is not only dependent on only x it is a function of x y and z it is having contribution from all the three axes because the particle can move along x axis y axis and z axis so its probability its position every all these quantities will have contribution from all the three axes so this is our first uh, movement from 1d to 3d 
but then not only the wave function think we have also to bother about this kinetic energy operator over here this kinetic energy operator that i have written here is only the x part is only considering my is on, has been done by following the momentum only along x axis and we have found out this kinetic energy by doing px square by twice isn't it remember uh, day before yesterday's class we had found this h cut square by twice m minus h cut square by twice m del 2 del x square from p square from px square but today we have to find out the kinetic energy not only along the x axis but y and z axis as well so what will i have then i hope all of you will agree with me if i tell you that instead of only one term today when i am going to write the total kinetic energy i can i not write it like this please all of you note this can i not write it as del 2 del x square plus del 2 del y square plus del 2 del z square isn't this my total kinetic energy operator today is this good yes correct so instead of only having one term about the kinetic energy operator in our schrodinger's equation today our life is little bit more complicated since we will have to work not only with del 2 del x square but two more terms where we are having the contribution from y as well as z axis so i hope all of you have understood this so this particular form of the total kinetic energy operator is now to be put in our schrodinger's equation so uh, i'm not sure uh, whether i'll be able to write it as large but i will try so that you all can legibly see this okay so let us now try to translate our one dimensional schrodinger equation in the form of a three dimensional schrodinger equation so what will i write then i will write let me like write it in a little bit uh, smaller fonts i will now write it as h cut square by twice m del 2 del x square plus del 2 del y square plus del 2 del z square plus v reminding all of you once again this v is also a function of x y z today and the shy that we are now writing the shy that we are now writing is also a function of x y and z today and this can be equated to the total energy of the system acting upon our shy and obviously this shy is again a function of x y and the z axis so this is how our total or the three dimensional schrodinger equation will look like now just one little point please look into this quantity del 2 del x square del 2 del y square del 2 del z square can any one of you think and tell me what is this quantity actually if you remember our vector classes we used to write the operator delta as i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z and remember when i do a dot product of two deltas what will i have i will take a dot product of this with itself and hence what will i have i will only be left with del 2 del x square plus del 2 del y square plus del 2 del z square so this this part of our equation over here is nothing but the operator del square right so if i don't want to write this entire three terms together i can also write this equation in very short form as minus h cut square by twice m delta square plus v acting on shy equal to equation so in lots of books and other places when you search for the three dimensional schrodinger equation 
it might look like this instead of writing all the three terms explicitly they prefer to write it like this as well okay so we have translated our study from a one dimensional system to a three dimensional system today we have changed our wave function from only a x dependent function to x y z three dependences as well as we have also shifted from one dimensional schrodinger equation to this 3d form so is this clear now now what we are going to do we are going to put the value of this potential that has been already defined earlier which is our potential box and then we will try to solve for it that means we are going to see how the wave function will come out and we will also see how the energy is going to be received from this particular mathematics fine very nice it feels really nice when i see yes ma'am clear ma'am all these things it gives me satisfaction that just like a normal class i am having feedback from you all so thanks so i would prefer to keep it this way you will understand very soon why so instead of writing it in a very short form of delta square let me write it in this form only but now just think this equation i told you that we are going to solve it nice you all have believed me and you all are all are ready to solve it with me but then think this wave function is a function of three quantities x y z we are having three different operators along x axis y axis z axis this v also has been de defined along the three axis so isn't this entire scenario a little bit complicated remember when we were doing the time dependent schrodinger equation we changed we uh, we made the variables independent we separated the variables x and t because we said that why to keep x and t together and complicate our lives so there we separated the position and time components but today when we are talking about only the position but yet in 3d we are again having x axis y axis z axis we are having three variables to talk to again we are having three variables to solve for one second so then what is the next step that we could do to make this entire mathematics easy once again we are going to separate out the variables and in this case what are the variables the variables are no, no longer position and time in this case the three variables all of them are position but along the three separate axes x y and z so from this equation what i will now do what we will now learn to do is to separate out x one equation which will only have x one equation which will only have y and one equation which will only have z and it will be very simple for us to solve for only x y z separately and then finally we can again combine it to get the total wave function so once again we are going to take the same method that we had done earlier which is the method of separation of variables and this time we are going to separate out the three different axes x y and z okay so are we ready so the first step in doing this particular method is to define our wave function psi remember we have already talked that this is a function of x y and z so now what will i do i will write it as a product of three terms i will write it as a product of three terms one which is only a function of x another which is only a function of y and another which is only a function of z so this so called psi this wave function is now a product of capital x into capital y into capital z where capital x only has contribution from x capital y is only dependent on y and capital z is only a function of z so i hope all of you will agree with me that we can do like this and from here from this psi in this particular place that we have written we are now going to take x y z the product of x y z and put them over here so are you all with me so now uh, now next in the next steps when i am going to write x y z i will not be writing these functions i will only write it as a product of x y z please remember whenever you see like this while i am writing this x is only a function of small x this y is only a function of the y and this capital z is only a function of the z 
right so now what are we going to do i am going to take this x y z and i'm going to replace this please bear with me because this place is little bit small so what can i do into x y z and here also we will write x y and z fine now now let us do little bit of next step of mathematics now minus h cut square by twice and remains the constant my del 2 del x square is going to act on the x y z now see when this del 2 del x square is going to act on this function on which part do you think it will only act it will only act on x y and z being the functions of y and z only del 2 del x square has nothing to do with it so i hope all of you will agree if i write it like this twice m y and z stand here like constants and who acts on this del 2 del x square only acts on x am i right similarly in the second term who will be treated as a constant x and z so x z del 2 y del y square plus this del 2 del z square is going to treat x y as constants x y del 2 z del z square am i right this is equal to e into x y and z am i right fine very nice very nice so what can we do now in this scenario i hope all of you have uh, taken your time to understand this let me not rush a lot just see just look into this equation we are now uh, in a situation we are standing in a situation where our del 2 del x square is only acting on the capital x and the same method has been followed in the next two terms as well in this position i would like all of you to do one fact let us divide this entire equation let us divide this entire equation by x y z please understand what i am doing i am dividing this entire equation now by x y z by the product x y z then what will i be left with this will go away here i will be having 1 by z here i will be having 1 by y and here i will be having 1 by x my dear students i hope all of you have understood what i have done now please see this please see one thing i don't want to have this minus x cut square by twice and on this side i'm going to take this along with our along with our right hand side so i hope all of you will agree if now i equate this term as minus twice m by h cut square into e and i take this away correct correct fine now in this scenario i hope all of you are understanding where we are going to just like the last days class where we were separating x and t but here we are having a little bit of uh, a point to think about and what is that this total energy e and what do i want all of you to think is this total energy e has a contribution from the x part of the entire system as well as it will have some contribution from the y as well as the z axis then what i can write over here is that this total energy e is actually the sum of ex plus ey plus ez please tell me that you have understood this fact where have i missed oh ho oh, yes 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 i have missed v please uh, yes thank you rishab and uh, if someone else has also uh, krishnendu 
many of you have already told me that I have missed V. Now, why I have missed D, V? Let me clarify first. I might be rushing a little bit. I have not, I have chosen to write this V as zero. I have, as if I have got rid of this V because we are solving for a three dimensional potential box. And if I'm solving only within the box, what is the value of V within the box? It is zero, isn't it? So that is why conveniently I have put it to zero and I have ignored it. But please make it a point that I, I'm, uh, I should have actually mentioned earlier. But thanks to all my students, you all are very vigilant. You are letting me know that there was a, a gap in our, uh, in our class. So thanks to all of you. So now is this clear? Why the V is missing? The V is missing because in our mathematics, we need not have the V. Because we are solving for the three-dimensional potential box within which V is simply zero. Correct? Okay, 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 okay. Thanks. I should be keeping more uh, a watch over here because you all give me very positive feedbacks. Thanks. And so if that is all set, now we are again coming back to this, this, this portion. So what I have done now, we are having the left-hand side equated to twice m by h cut square with a minus sign. But what I have done, I have written the total energy E as a sum of three terms. And those sum, those three terms are basically as if the contribution from the x, y, and z parts of the entire system. Fine. Now, now look into the entire left-hand side as well as the right-hand side. I have something like one term. If you consider the first term over here, this first term only has x dependence. Similarly, the second term only has y dependence. And the third term only has and first term, second term, third term, they are nowhere related to each other, which means this x is nowhere related to y and z. And same thing can be told about the y and the z terms as well. On the other hand, along the, in the right hand side also, I have three terms, one which is only for the x part, one which is only for the y part, and one which is only for the z part. So this is where we have to understand the fact that this kind of situation only arises since x, y, and z, the three axes that we generally talk about, the Cartesian coordinates, they are completely independent of each other, which means x, y, and z are mutually, I mean, uh, mutually, not only perpendicular, they are exclusive. x does not depend on y and z. So in this equation, from this entire 3 plus 3, 6 term equation, we can extract out three separate equations where I can only keep x, y, and z together and then equate that thing to zero. Are you following me? So we are going to extract out the three different, three different uh, equations, one from x, one from y, and one from z. And finally, that thing can be equated to zero. Now, please see why I'm saying equating to zero. Suppose I'm taking this minus twice m h cut square ex along with this term. This minus will come to the left-hand side as a plus. Correct? So that equation, if those two terms, that part, then I will have two terms, one with y, this y plus twice m h cut square e y. And in the third part, I will have this z part and two, plus twice m h cut square e z. So when I take all these three terms to the left hand side, I will be left with a zero on the right hand side. Correct? And what will I finally have? Just let me write it down. I hope I can write it within this space. I will have something like, I will have something like this. Please see what I am doing. I am jumping one step, but I hope all of you will understand when I do so. That is, del 2, del y,
this is our second term and our third term will be class del 2 del z square plus twice m e z by h bar square acting on z is equal to 0 still you all have understood this part please give me uh, some feedback over here so that i can know that you all have understood this part very nice very nice so mm, so this is where now we are standing so see what we are having we are having three separate equations independent of each other equating to zero and from here we can take the liberty we are actually going to take the liberty which is feasible as well which is actually true and what is that individually each of these three equations is equal to zero okay when three separate entities which are not related to each other are summing up to be zero actually that means individually all these three are equal to zero so now where am i by taking this method actually what i have done i have received three equations this equal to zero this is um, our equation number 1 this again equal to zero is my equation number this is another equation and this y is equal to 0 this are the three different equations one in x one in y and one in z separately getting equated to 0 so beginning from the three dimensional schrodinger equation for the potential box that we defined we have separated the variables which variables x y and z and now we are having three different or three separate equations to solve for so it will be much easy for me to solve for an equation where i have only the variable as x only another equation with a variable y and the third equation with a variable of z and if you notice carefully children all of you that is why i was asking you all to be ready with yesterday's class notes If you now look into this particular equation, see along the x-axis. Let me just rub this part. I hope all of you have already written this. Let me just concentrate on the x part now. If you look into this equation carefully, isn't this equation the same, almost the same as we had written for the one-dimensional potential uh, well yesterday? Only instead of this x, we had the total wave function psi then because our psi was only dependent on x and today this capital x is only a part of the total wave function which we had written as a product of x y z that is the difference and there is also a very little difference as in here i do not have the total energy e i have only the contribution of the x part which is e x but apart from that form wise this equation is same as yesterday's equation right so if we are able if we could solve it yesterday we can solve it today as well with the same uh, boundary conditions with the same normalization condition we will be able to solve this equation so today i will not be following the same step i will just write down the solution for the x axis now please all of you see what i am writing and try to understand we will discuss this so when i solve this equation what i am going to get i am going to get the value of x which is a function of our x axis variable and that will be exactly like that of yesterday's root under root 2 by a sin n pi x by If this is the solution we had found yesterday but now think of a situation that in this case what will be the value of this n this n is only present in the wave function in the part of the wave function which is following our capital x so what we will do instead of writing as an n as such we will also give it a new name we will write this as nx 
which means which n the n which is associated to the x part of my wave function is this correct so see solving the the x part of our wave function following the same logic like yesterday we are writing down the solution to be like so like root over 2 by a sin function n n x of pi x by a and why i have written a here because remember while defining the potential box our potential along the x axis was zero only in which dimension from zero to a so following the same logic if i now ask you to write down what will be the value of y can you all tell me can you all i know all of you can write and what will that be i will also have the same sign function but instead of n x now because i am writing the y part i will write it as n y pi instead of x now i will be writing it as my y but can you tell me what will be the value of this this constant here is it going to be a again the answer is no it is going to be small b because remember while we were defining the potential box along the y axis the dimension defined was from 0 to b and hence the amplitude also will be root over 2 by b so see the logic remains the same only what has changed in this case the dimension the dimension has changed from 0 to a to 0 to b and instead of nx i am going to write the number as ny that number which is associated to the y part of my wave function fine in the same analogy what will i now write for z my z will now be under root 2 by c because instead of a and b now along the z axis we had defined it as 0 to c correct so it will be 2 by c once again sign but now the number will be called as nz pi z by c again right so this is what brings us to the complete solution of the schrodinger equation for three dimension but if i write if i keep it like this over here will my job be done the answer is no why because i individually know what is x what is y and what is z but remember what is my total result my total result shy is x into y into z so if i ask you to write down the total wave function for the particle confined within the potential box what will you have to give me as an answer not this but this into this into this right so see this is going to be a very big wave function so coming down from one dimensional potential well to a three dimensional potential box what we are getting we are obviously getting a much more larger or complicated answer but i hope all of you have understood the 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 logic behind how we have received this result is it so everybody has uh, understood yes risha you are right that everything is common except the dimension because in this case we are having we are dealing with three dimension so as if we are not only having one result we are having the result in 3d so finally if i if i summarize this entire thing if i want to write what is my net what is my total wave function give me some time so that i can write it because as you can know this is a very large one i hope i can fit it within this part see i'm going to take a product of this x into y into z so root over 2a into root over 2b into root over 2c will give me this wave function can be written as root over 8 by a into b into c the amplitudes and then i am going to write down all the separate sine functions for x y and z axis so remember we are not writing any n since i am writing now for the x part i will not forget to put an n x pi x by a next sign for n y pi y by b and the last one for z sin n z pi z by c so we are having the total wave function total wave function in terms of position only obviously 
the total wave function of a particle which is confined within the schrodinger i mean the potential box right so i hope everybody has understood very nice very nice but is our job finished not yet because we now have to talk about the energy part remember we have to now talk about the energy part now i will uh, let me just write it down let me just write it down yes write down the yesterday's uh, result first then we can translate it to today's three keeping this in our mind as well as in our copies and the whiteboard let us just now think about the energy remember when we talked about energy for a particle in one dimensional potential well what was our result we had written it as en n square h cut square i square by twice m a square this is what we had received yesterday and we are going to take the same logic today as well correct and remember what was uh, what was our total energy today when i was writing the energy remember i already wrote that e was equal to ex plus ey plus ez so today following the same formula i will be writing i can write a value of ex i can write ey and i can write ez now i hope all of you will agree with me if for ex what i will write for ex this n is no longer any n this n is nx so i can write it as nx is equal am i right so this ex part of the total energy following the same uh, logic that we had did, done yesterday i can receive it as nx square h cut square pi square by twice m a square now if i ask you to write down the value of ey what will you write if i am going to write ey what will change this n will now be the ny part and instead of the term a square i will be having b square because b was how we had defined the potential box along the y axis so my ey is this part and then what will be z ez will be instead of y i will now name it as z square and instead of b square i will be writing it as c square fine so now if i ask you that let us summarize and let us write down the total energy of the particle what will i write we will just sum up all the three contributions and please write with me it will be good for you i can write the total energy as see i will take the common terms together h cut square by twice m nx square by a square plus oh there is a pi square as well nx square by a square ny square by b square plus nz square by c square so here we come to actually the total solution of schrodinger equation with the wave function looking like this large thing contribution from x y and z and our total energy also has a contribution from x axis y axis as well as the z term so this is how the total energy of this particle that we are dealing with looks like is this clear now i will be just uh, going forward with a very small uh, part of the lesson and then we will be finishing up but that is a very very interesting one and that is a very very important one as well from terms of either the concept as well as exams fine so what i will do now i will ask all of you to think of a situation think of a potential where instead of a not equal to b not equal to c we are going to consider a equal to b equal to c which means not a three dimensional potential box rather a three dimensional potential cube where all the three axes have the same dimension of say a equal to b equal to c so all of them are taking the value a square then what will i do 
then i will take this particular a square because a square is common i can write it here and this will be the total energy of that potential q do you all follow me are you all following me please give me the feedback that you have you are all with me what i have done we have solved the three dimensional potential box and as a sub uh, sub result or or you can say as a uh, as a side example i am just asking you to take a particular case where a is equal to b is equal to c we have taken that uh, equation that that particular value to be a square and then i can take that a square as a common on this part fine so if we are standing in this we have understood what is this i have a question for you all and that question is can you tell me what will be the minimum energy of this system of this system minimum energy remember is also called the ground state energy so i want you all to tell me for what what will be the value of the ground state energy level yesterday when we were doing the one dimensional potential well remember how did we find out the ground state energy we put the value of n as one but here we are not having only one n we are having an nx and ny as well as nz reminding all of you any n cannot take any value n is equal to 0 that is not allowed so our minimum value of n that we can put over here will come from nx equal to 1 ny equal to 1 and nz equal to 1 so what will be the energy at that time the energy will be as if Three of this constant. Are you following me? So let me just write it down as this value will be equal to thrice of this constant. I'm not going to write it so many times. So let this part be called as uh, some what? Some constant c. so my lowest energy level energy or the ground state energy comes from the contribution of nx equal to 1 ny equal to 1 nz equal to 1 in this scenario how do we write this energy we write this energy as e111 we write this energy as e111 which is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 3 3 into this part which i have written as c do you all follow with me have you all followed and when the particle is in this energy state what will its wave function look like what we will do since we have already talked that nx is 1 and y is 1 and nz is 1 the wave function in this case all these values nx will be 1 and y will be 1 and nz will be 1 and that particular wave function will be written as psi of 1 1 Did you all follow? So this is the lowest energy that a particle could have when it is inside the particular potential Q. Fine. And the wave function that will be associated to this energy will be called as psi one 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 with n x, n y, and n z values equal to one. Fine. Then tell me how can I find out what will be the first excited state energy? can you tell me i want answers over here how will i get my next excited state energy i am i am going to consider all the three values so what comes to our mind when we were doing yesterday from n is equal to 1 we jump to n is equal to 2 correct but here i don't have only one n i have three n ns nx ny and nz so for the first excited state energy this is very very important children please consider and listen carefully after i have found out what is my ground state energy level and i have also talked about the ground state wave function we are now going to talk about the next excited level energy and please think and tell me what will be the values of nx ny and nz if i just want to go on the first excited state See, yes, all of you are having this idea that all of them together is going to go to two, two, two. But no, it is. What is the next level? Only an X could go to two. These two will remain one, one. 
Otherwise, nx and nz can re remain 1. Only ny can raise to 2. Similarly, nz could go to 2 and nx and ny could remain 1. Please see that I hope when I write this, isn't the value of E211 equal to E121 equal to E112? Why am I writing like this? When nx is 2, I am writing it as E. The other two are 1, 1. And since this is giving me the contribution of 2 squared, so 4 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 6 of this constant. Are you all following me? That here, the, sec the first excited state energy is 6 times this constant. And it can be received by taking any one of these nx or ny or nz to the value 2. Very good. So we are having this value. But just take a break. Now just think. What will be the wave function for E211? Only nx will be 2. These 2 will be 1. Even though the energy values E211 is equal to E121 is equal to E112, I hope all of you will agree with me if I write that wave function 211 is not same as wave function 121 is not same as wave function 112. Are you getting me? So see, the particle is in a different state, is in a different wave function. However, its energy is same. So I am having three different states of the system which are different from each other. However, the energies are the same, which is six of this constant value. And this particular situation where more than one state can have same value of energy is called degeneracy. I will repeat once again, children. Whenever a situation arises where more than one state, when I say state, I mean the wave function, when more than one state has a single value of energy, this situation is called, is called degeneracy is called D generacy. And this is a very, very important term or important concept in our quantum mechanics. So as if not only, see, when I was talking about the one-dimensional potential yell, well, yesterday, E1 was different from E2, was different from E3. Shy1 was different from, Shy2 was different from Shy3. So for a single wave function psi 1, I had a single energy E1. Today also, when we talked about psi 1, 1, 1, we had only a same energy E1, 1, 1. However, the moment the system has is having a higher energy, we can see that the same energy can be possessed by three number of states. So what do we call, how do we call this particular situation in quantum mechanics? We call that, for the three-dimensional potential Q, the first excited energy, the first excited state is three-fold degenerate. What is the degeneracy level? It is three-fold, which means whenever you see three-fold, it means you will know that there are three wave functions which give rise to the same energy. Fine? Somewhere if you see it is n-fold degenerate, what will you understand? That there are n such wave functions in the same system which can give us the same energy value. So have you understood what, how, what are we calling as degeneracy? When more than one state, when more than one wave function corresponds to the same value of energy, we can call it as a degeneracy. And as many wave functions correspond to the same value of energy, those many fold is the degeneracy. So twofold, threefold is what can be the number like. Fine? Yes. Now coming to our second excited level. My question, we have started with chi 111, the ground state level. Then we have talked about the first excited energy level, E211. E121, which is equal to E112. 
Now my question will be, what is the second excited state energy? Obviously, now you all have understood what I am pointing towards. Now I am pointing towards a situation where two of these numbers will go to two. Any of two, the num two of the numbers, this two, this two, this one, like this. So I hope you will understand if I write two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, two. Once again, see the second excited level is also threefold degenerate because when I write the value of nx as two, ny as two, that is not the same as ny two and nz two. So the wave functions are not the same. However, their corresponding energies are the same. So the second excited state energy or the second excited level is also having a threefold degeneracy. Yes, Sandeep, very very good. You have exactly written what I was trying to write over here. Now my question is, all of you, please, you will have to answer me. And what is that? What will be the third excited level? What will be the third excited level? I want answers over here. I want the, the situation. When will I have the third excited level? Please, all of you, I want as many answers. That will be, I will be very happy. Ah, Nawazish has said to degenerate orbitals. Yes, Nawazish, correct. Degeneracy, orbitals are what? Orbitals are the, the place where we search for the electron. They are nothing but actually another picture of a function. Good. Yes. So, Sandeep has said 2, 2, 2. Rupam has also said 2, 2, 2. So, all of you are telling me that when individually all of these are going to take the values of 2, 2 and 2. When I put all the values of 2 over here, what will be the value? 4 plus 4 plus 4, which means 12 of the constant, 12 of this constant. So, as per our assumption, we had E111 as our first level, E112 and the rest, E211, 221 as the second, first excited, second excited. And now you are telling me the third is going to be E222, which will give me the value of energy as 12 of this constant. However, children, now please consider the situation where, say Nx is 3, this is 1, and this is 1. What will be the value of energy? What will be the value of energy? 9 plus 1 plus 1, it is going to be 11c. So see, it's not 2, 2, 2, which is the third excited level. It is 3, 1, 1 or 1, 3, 1 or 1, 1, 3 with the value of 11 times the constant, which is our third excited level. Why am I actually asking you to see this? Because... They give you questions that find out the energy difference between second excited level and third excited level. Please do not put the value as 2, 2, 2 as in 12C. That is actually our fourth excited level. So I hope all of you have understood. Sreshtha, what, what is your problem? Sreshtha, you can please uh, write down your question. I will try to answer. So, by the time Shreshna is sending her question, let me just summarize the entire thing once again. When we were talking about the ground state energy level, we had only one wave function corresponding to one energy, right? Which was thrice of the particular constant value. Now, when our second excited level had to be considered, what happened? We saw that individually, any one of these numbers could raise to the value of 2 and gave us the value 6 of this constant. And we saw that corresponding to three different wave functions, three different wave functions, we had the same value of energy. And hence I called you that this situation was called as degeneracy and the level of degeneracy was threefold. The same thing was also seen for the next level, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2. 
and in the third uh, what has shrestha written if we are not taking 2 to 2 uh, okay okay uh, if i have understood your question well let me let me just put it uh, let me remind uh, i mean summarize this part then i will come to your question okay so as i was telling we have seen that for first excited state for second excited state and for this third excited state these states are degenerate by three fold so my first level energy was 3c then we reached to 6c then what was the value 9c i guess 9c 11c and as we are coming to the next excited level with 2 2 2 this value comes out to be 12c okay now before uh, i go further with the explanation let me answer the shrestha's question shrestha my question was find out the energy difference between second excited level and say third excited level so which one is my second excited level this is my second excited level this is my third excited level so all i will have to do is this minus this however in my concept if i am not clear if instead of taking 311 as my third excited level i am thinking that no 222 is my my level and i am putting in 12 over here my sum goes wrong okay so remember the concept of all the three numbers going to 2 is actually bringing us to the fourth excited level it is not the third excited level you will also see the same mistake in some of the books they forget about the situation where when i raise one of the numbers to 3 that actually gives us our third excited level fine so now coming back to this part so shy 11 when i was talking the ground state energy level was non degenerate it did not have any degeneracy and after coming through three fold degeneracy in shy 112 the first excited second excited and third excited now i am back to a position where all these numerals are taking the number 222 and what will i have then the wave function is also once again a unique one i do not have any degeneracy for this level of energy which is e to e right so just like the ground state energy level this level is also non degenerate the term which i am using here is non degenerate okay so that's all we had to discuss today since uh, coming from 1d we have today translated our entire thing to 3d the problem the complication obviously was a little bit more but i hope whatever the steps we have done we have understood our 3d and also we have learnt about a very important concept which is the degeneracy so more will be coming in our next uh, lectures i hope you will be having a very nice weekend i have taken up a long time today and thank you all for bearing with me so see you all once again next week bye bye have a very nice weekend